Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to YouTube. Some of you may have heard rumors that there's a new policy in town. This new rule is all about content moderation, but be careful not to upset the YouTube overlords or else they will take away your income. But not to worry, I'm not at risk, as this channel is too small to generate ad revenue. Another policy that left the community feeling a bit raw. Basically, YouTube thrust a big pack of rules onto channels even affecting content over a decade old. Everything from using words they don't like within the first 8 to 15 seconds of a video, depending on where you look, presumably because of the first that run at the start of a video, which doesn't make sense if there are other breaks throughout the video, but it doesn't stop there. YouTube doesn't stop, even if the other parties don't approve. Videos containing violence, real, fictional, or cartoon, or disaster footage are also included, as well as other topics. Like when lockdown started, you couldn't mention Virus, a global pandemic affecting everyone's lives and you were barely allowed to hint at it. YouTube, the authoritarian state. Now these policies have already caused substantial income loss to creators and many have spoken out about it. Yang Ya, ProZD, Philip DeFranco, and the one who probably drew it to my attention first was RT Game. He's not a creator I watch, but I have heard of him in the past. He's an Irish YouTuber and he streams gaming mostly. Just the four of them have over 14 million subscribers and some 47 million monthly views collectively. When you look at the breadth of videos affected across every channel, we are likely talking about millions of dollars in damages across the entire platform. But aside from empathy, why should you even care as viewers? Well, it's the accessibility of that content when it gets uh, restricted. Apparently, some regions even made the foolish decision to mandate that your ID be provided to guarantee that you are above the age. And they've mandated that that be provided to Google, YouTube's parent company. You know, this Google, the one that hasn't been sued for privacy violations countless times, and can absolutely be trusted with your information. Besides, no company has ever had a data breach before. Now, let's be fair and listen to what the other side has to say. Well, according to YouTube, these policies are plainly visible for everyone to see. They even emailed these fresh policies in advance. So I did get an email on one of my accounts alluding to the fact that there would be a terms of service change a year ago, apparently. But also then I got an email from Google, which said more or less the same thing. It didn't summarize at all what those changes were. And so when I browsed through it, I couldn't really find anything new and I couldn't find the new terms of service that other people referenced. And I know that in the past, Canada tends to get its terms of service changes a little bit later than the United States. So there's a chance it hasn't happened here yet. Creators should have just known better and capitulated, right? Apparently not. YouTube has an editor creators can use on the back end. Not that it works well. Not only that, but you cannot replace content within a video once uploaded. YouTube won't let you. And that has caused many problems in the past. Instead, creators would have to delete the content and re-upload it, which seemingly upsets the algorithm and kills video performance. Not to mention breaking any external links to that content. Regardless, even if they had been advised to retroactively apply these updates to old videos, some channels have videos in the thousands accrued over many years. It would take more than a couple of weeks or months to apply these changes. That is, assuming you would even know what offends the censor bots. YouTube consistently uses vague language and is completely inconsistent 
when slapping creators across the face with its face, often displaying favoritism. And if you happened to miss the email or didn't understand, you would think you could find a plethora of information. You would think that if you typed YouTube into the search bar, you would find all the latest YouTube news. But again, no. Instead, you would be hard pressed to even find a single video with YouTube in the title. YouTube seems to suppress any content featuring terms like YouTube. I suspect it's due to the fact that most of the discussion surrounding YouTube is negative. In the past, they have received massive criticism and backlash for their policies. For example, the aforementioned decision to limit monetization to both a thousand subscribers and something like four thousand watch hours. The, then there's the topic blackouts mentioned previously, the copyright system, Adpocalypse 1 and 2, their appeals and dispute resolution system. The list is long at this point. Concerns, however, were and continue to be largely ignored. Even things like the former Rewind. Yeah, it's rewind time. Which was a year in review video that used to come out every year that was supposedly to celebrate all the creators who made a big impact on this platform of user-generated content. But then there was an uproar uh, over apparent favoritism, celebrity focus, political bend, and shunning the platform's largest creator at the time. So what do we have so far? New rules that blanket all content, future and existing, no real way to make the old content comply, and unclear rules governing what can and can't be shown or discussed without consideration of context or format. Now remember kids, the first rule of policy making is that consistency and language doesn't matter. It would certainly be embarrassing if YouTube, for example, currently had a rampant issue with the ads they plastered all over their pages. Right now, YouTube has a major problem with their disgusting ads. YouTube is about as bad as a mid-2000s blog site with the kinds of advertisements they are smearing all over. Their ads even violate their own new content restrictions and some of the old ones. You have vomit-inducing, gaping, and infected wounds, moldy toenails, very graphic stuff, and without context or relevance to the content saddled around it. They have misleading ads. You have risque ads. Some would even argue they're objectifying ads. Even fraudulent ads. Okay, here's an advertisement I ran into over the holidays. Here, it's clearly passing itself off as Mr. Beast. I assume Mr. Beast isn't actually behind it, which, in which case I would be appalled, but I don't think that's the case. If you haven't heard of him, he's now apparently the largest creator on the platform. Congratulations, that's actually quite impressive. That's a lot of, a lot of subscribers. I don't watch him myself, but he is widely known for doing bizarre things and offering giveaways. So you can understand how one might be taken in by such ads and jump on the opportunity. I was in such disbelief that YouTube would stoop this low that I went to see if maybe there was more to it and I had a misunderstanding of some kind. I found the same ads 
with conflicting statements, that would tell right away that that's not real. If you click on the link, it immediately tells you something else as well. Then it tries to farm your information. Then it wants you to buy a subscription. These do not at all comply with my region's legal standards for advertisements and giveaways. And I, I hazard a guess it doesn't comply with most regions. They are just, they are just flat out unethical, if not fraudulent, which they appear to be. The moment I saw this, I tried to report it. Nope. You can falsely report a video for all kinds of things, but you can't report an advertisement that can cause real harm. I even tried to contact Mr. Beast so he could warn his subscribers, as any organization is supposed to do, just like when there's an Air Miles or WestJet phone scam. But nope, not YouTube, they'll promote it. If I had a TV show or website or news station, these are the kinds of ads I would not want anywhere near my brand. These ads make Raid Shadow Legends look utopian. YouTube is telling everyone that your content is unacceptable and it makes them look bad. If you give them money, they will happily spread that deplorable content everywhere they can. This isn't even just limited to the banner ads they've started wedging in everywhere to the detriment of the functionality of their website. No, this even includes advertisements in video. And not all creators can even say they don't want to be associated with it and turn off those ads. This goes back to a previous uproar where YouTube unilaterally forced its policy on creators. A few years ago, YouTube announced it was going to start shoving its ads into every unmonetized video on the platform, including those that don't qualify for monetization and who will not receive compensation, which is a huge problem with some potential copyright issues and removes a substantial appeal that allows smaller channels to grow. But it also means it can circumnavigate paying its partner creators who already run advertisements and get paid to do so. YouTube has full control over the content we see and data logging of that content. We cannot know that those filled videos without middlemen, the creators, are actually promoted and viewed more, siphoning away revenue that would otherwise be earned by their partners. They could easily make the algorithm to keep the uncompensated creators from hitting the threshold to become compensated, minimize the views of those who are compensated, and yet still direct users to all their cost-free advertisements. There are no restraints, and as far as YouTube is concerned, it has sole discretion over everything. Acting as if the platform isn't exclusively reliant upon the free content uploaded by individual creators and subsequently their viewers, the users of YouTube. In the immediate, their missteps are causing lost revenue and mental anguish to people reliant on the work they have built over however many years, even from the start of YouTube, some of the creators. But broader, rules like the content moderation are going to result in decreased content variety available on YouTube. As creators distance themselves from anything vaguely related to YouTube's loose policies that creators fear will cause them harm. It might dissuade some news coverage, gameplay, comics, art, film reviews and critiques. It also just impacts creators themselves and discourages them from creating content at all. Ultimately, YouTube is shooting itself in the foot, driving people off the platform to places like Utreon, TikTok, Odyssey, Rumble, Facebook, your own website, and any number of competitors that might pop up. In conclusion, YouTube does not care about you, the viewer, or the individual creators you enjoy. They implement arbitrary, unilateral, and unclear stipulations while ignoring serious issues like swatting, bigotry, fraudulent copyright claims, and mass flagging campaigns. They have the tools to allow creators to resolve the problem with their own content, but deny creators the ability to comply. For as much as YouTube spouts about caring for mental health, 
it is more than happy to cause and ignore anguish. What can we do about it? Realistically, without YouTube's cooperation, there is no desirable, perfect outcome. We can pressure them by moving to other platforms, but in the end, they aren't going to stop causing harm with what are effectively unilateral contract changes unless enough creators get together and either file a lawsuit or form a union. Without someone preventing or deterring them, why not? As individuals, you can be easily intimidated. But hey, don't worry. Next, they may decide 88% of your super chats are going to go to YouTube with only 12% going to support the creator. Don't forget, they are only hosting your content. It is your content people want to see and others want to advertise on. Thank you for watching. If you want to support creators, help get the word out. Watch, like, share all of the videos discussing these issues. That's it. I'm done. I'm not. That's just stopping now.